Here's the Benchdog Pro Max cast iron router table extension installed on my rigid R4512 table saw. As you can see, yes, I'm a bit of a rigid fan. Here's the underside of the router table. The table has seven holes total on the back for connecting to a standard three or four hole setup. If you have a table saw with four holes, here are two of the holes that you will be using on the right half. If you have a table saw with three holes, You'll use the center hole and the outer hole on either side. The directions for the router table say you cannot install it on the left on a left tilting table saw, such as mine. This is because the left tilting table saw bulges out to the left creating a very small workspace, as you can see here. But as you probably noticed, I did it anyways. I could only do it by using the original bolt that came with my table saw because it is tightened using a center hex bit instead of a large 17mm wrench as the other bolts require. But even with a small hex bit, I still had to use a flexible drive enabled to apply adequate torque. Here's the tool I used. If you want to install on the left and you have a left tilting table saw, you'll have to get fancy as I did. Otherwise. It should be an easy install, as my two outer bolts were very easy to access and tighten. You do have the option of installing the router table via the six side holes, of which you would have to fashion a way to connect it based on your table saw. For my table saw, the six holes do not line up with the bolt slot on the rails. As you can see, the bottom of the holes start at just above five millimeters from the base of the router table, where the bottom of the bolt slot on my rail starts at 8 millimeters. However, I imagine it wouldn't be too difficult to increase the size of the holes by drilling, giving you extra space to work with, or to drill brand new holes. Achieving a perfect or near perfect tabletop alignment is not difficult to do. For me, I just loosened the left or right outer bolt and adjusted the height until I got it aligned, as you can see here. Once you have your router plate, it is not a difficult task, but rather it's a tedious task to get it aligned. The router table has 10 alignment screws, as you can see here. I started by first eyeballing each screw as I put it in, then proceeded sequentially around, fine-tuning each screw as I came to it. After adjusting an alignment screw, I would run a small board across it to make sure it didn't catch or dip. After I finished, I tightened the nuts shown here on the bottom side to ensure each screw won't move. Once that was done, I just installed my router to the router plate and put it right in. The fence itself is pretty large and solid. I particularly like the fact that it extends past the width of the router table for extra support. The additional fence slots are also a nice feature on the router table itself. Adjusting the fence based on bit size is just a matter of loosening the four tightening T-bolts on the back side of the fence and sliding the wood panels out or in as needed. Aligning the fence as suggested in the manual is pretty easy to do. Using a combination square like the one shown here, just pull the fence forward on either side until it is properly aligned. There's no surprises when connecting up your shop vac. The adapter holds it well, as you'd expect. 